This is the GIS News Hour for Wednesday, November 16. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, government and Brazilian team Urbaniza elevate memorandum of understanding. Solidarity action being taken to support for flow employees and government supports Indian proposal for reverse osmosis plant in Carico. Details are next. loan scheme of the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Community Development benefits you as citizens by providing loans for you to improve your home. Remember that this scheme survives on a revolving fund, so for others to benefit, you must honor your repayment commitments. The Ministry of Housing, Lands and Community Development therefore encourages you to honor your obligation so that the lives of all citizens can be improved. Payment arrangements can be adjusted or modified to reduce any possible burdens. For further information, please contact the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Community Development on phone numbers 440-2103 or 440-1439. Remember, we all depend on each other for national development. Shop online at your favorite stores around the world and your package will be delivered to your doorstep right here in Grenada. The Grenada Postal Corporation brings you closer to the rest of the world with GPC Global. GPC Global is a new, exciting, and cost-effective service. For less than $20 US, you can have your own personal mailbox in the US and off you go shopping. You can view your shipment as it moves 24-7 with up-to-the-minute tracking. Make your purchase and GPC Global will do the rest, even customs clearance. We make it easy and hassle-free. GPC Global, the world at your fingertips. Dependable, reliable and safe. Welcome back, viewers. The Grenada government and the Brazilian team Urbaniza have elevated their memorandum of understanding, which now has some major changes. Wednesday's signing has been referred to by Senator George Prime as a way to cement the friendship that began in February 2010, while at the same time forging a closer relationship. Details from Greta Frederick. Upon further review, the government of Grenada saw it prudent to move the containerized component of the Caracol Freeport project to another site. Officials involved in the project say they are looking at possible sites in Grenville and other areas. The intention is to establish a duty-free zone for the warehousing and display of Brazilian products and the development of a functional container port with ancillary facilities at a suitable site. A memorandum of understanding was signed at the Cabinet Room on Wednesday between the Grenada government and representative of the Brazilian company Urbaniza. Minister with Responsibility for Caraco and Piti Martinic Affairs, Senator the Honorable George Prime, expressed the urgency and timeliness of a project of this magnitude. The government of Grenada take the view that as it relates specifically to Caraco and Piti Martinic, we would want to see a transformation. In other words, the creation, some people say we have an economy, it's neither here nor there with me. The truth is much is left to be desired in Karaku by way of development. So if you want to call it an economy or not. We have said that we want to create a new economy for Karaku and Piti Martin. And with that in mind, we found the able partnership of Urbaniza and indeed the country of Brazil. Urbaniza's representative at the sign-in, Dr. Christiana Bormini, said the company is pleased to encourage the alliance between Grenada and the South American country. Dr. Bormini explains there are many social and economic benefits to be derived from the Freeport Initiative. I see this day not only as an economic opportunity, I see as a social opportunity, which uh, we can uh, uh, set a benchmark for a new economical needs and then the new era for trading. 
and in a different way, which is fair for everybody, body we, where we can enclose everybody into this process. Managing Director of Wilson & Company, Lauriston Wilson, says a multitude of jobs will be generated from such a project. He says the movement of the containerized component is to ensure that Caracu's vital ecosystem will be protected. It is well conceived, well planned, and it's going to um, impact all the major sectors of the Grenada economy. In terms of employment, speak to me about in, that. In terms of employment, um, conservatively, I think that project is going to generate anything between 25 to 30,000 jobs over a five-year period. The signing ceremony was witnessed by Brazilian Ambassador Roberto Dinez, senior civil servants, government officials, representative Urbaniza, and the media. For the GIS News Hour, I am Greta Fedrick reporting. While things with workers at the Grenada Port Authority are calming down, issues with workers at Flow are stirring up. President General of the Technical and Allied Workers Union, Senator Chester Humphrey, announced on Wednesday that industrial action at the port has ceased temporarily pending the matter is resolved in full by Friday of this week. But in the same breath, he disclosed that solidarity action is now being taken in support of four employees at Flow who were served with letters of dismissal on Wednesday morning, as he said, without any prior notice. Details from Abigail McIntyre. This decision by Tawu comes after letters were served to four managerial staff, two men and two women, at Flo Grenada because of what the company termed a reorganization of the business. But for leaders at the Technical and Allied Workers Union, they believe this move is directly linked to a decision by the workers to get unionization from Tawu. For some time, Tawu has been trying to get 18 managerial staff at Flo to sign up with them for representation. It is the constitutional right of any Grenadian to do so if they request unionization for the protection of their interests. The four managers that were dismissed from work on a Thursday morning is said to be the ones who were encouraging the others to sign up. Chawu was expected to send in applications to the manager of Flo on Friday for the said 18 workers. But after just three hours of arriving on the job, the four employees were given the letters of dismissal and reports say that they were requested to turn in any of the company property and escorted off the compound. President General of Tau, Chester Humphrey, says this act is unacceptable. I think that the company became aware that the managerial staff had sought membership in our union. In fact, we have forms that have been filled out and we were about to apply within days to become the bargaining agent. And therefore, this hurry dismissal is nothing but an attempt to frustrate that effort. And this is what the letter that was sent to four of the workers read. Now, any company must know that it is reorganizing. Any company must know that well ahead of time. You don't wake up one morning. And therefore, to just all of a sudden treat people. And therefore, if you are working for me, and I know I would not need your service, I will give you the notice. I would say, look, gentlemen, we're reorganizing. Some jobs are going to go. In fact, we have had retrenchment in the banks, and the banks have d done that. They've called workers together. We've done it. Cable and Wireless have done retrenchments, including managerial staff. And the managerial staff of Cable and Wireless are now members of the Technical and Allied Workers Union. And the company would call them together and say, look, we are reorganizing. Some jobs will go, right? And they will give an indication and so on. In the case of Flo, this did not happen. This morning, as these workers reported to work, they were given the following letter. We regret to inform you that due to the restructuring of the company's operations, we are left with no alternative but to implement a reduction in the normal labor force and to declare the position you hold with the company as surplus to its requirements and therefore redundant with effect from November the 16th. Today, for today. So you left your home this morning, put the kids in the vehicle, kiss your wife goodbye, drop the kids off to school, come to work, and the first thing you receive as you come to work is that you no longer have a job because we are reorganizing. This is the tantamount to summary dismissal. It is tantamount to a worker pulling a cutlass on the job, and therefore the manager says you're fired. 
It's time to mount a worker caught stealing, and the manager say, look, you're fired. Close cash, you're fired. You don't treat people in this manner. And this dismissal, we have serious reasons to believe, is connected to the efforts that we've had for unionization of the managerial staff. And what has happened? They have targeted the key people who are behind the unionization and have terminated their services. And this, quite frankly, is totally unacceptable. In light of this, Tower will be taking solidarity action in support of the workers. We have in our position here the signed forms. We were expecting additional forms today, and we would have made the application on Friday. For the bargaining unit, consists of 17, 18 workers. 18 management workers. Um, as we understand it, the company got word. The company got word of that development, and that is why they hurriedly terminated the services of whom they, determ whom they determined to be the four ringleaders, so to speak. I don't care what they say, that it is for reorganization. We are convinced that it is not for reorganization. It is an anti-union act in order to thaw or frustrate the application for representation. So you fire those who you perceive to be leaders, and therefore you scare off the balance so there will be no representation. We verily do believe that this is what is unfolding. You don't terminate the service of a man who gave you 19 years of service, unstinting service without a complaint, without prior notice, without some prior discussion a few months ago that look we're reorganizing. We can't tell you yet whose jobs may go, but we're reorganizing the department for whatever, whatever, whatever. 19 years of consecutive service, but you're doing nothing wrong. You mean the way you treat people is the morning they report to work after 19 years of service, you kiss them goodbye? Meanwhile, Tau has suspended industrial action at the Grenada Port Authority pending the outcome of the finance minister's efforts. On Thursday morning, the union met with the board of directors and the minister to find a resolution to the port dispute. Minister Burke requested that they be given an extension on the time for the last tranche of retroactive pay for workers. He also gave work to consider the issue and come up with a plan by Friday. Senator Humphrey says if the minister fails to deliver on the comprehensive solution to the matter, then the union will reinstitute industrial action. That solution must be the following. The immediate payment, and immediate in this sense means payment during the course of next week of the last tranche, tranche of the retroactive money which arose from the job evaluation, an agreement to pay within six months at 11% interest, the approximately half a million dollars in overtime that is due, payment of the amounts which we agreed with the Port Authority in respect of the bus terminus workers, and um, that is an adjustment in wages which we had arrived at. In return, the union will comply with clause three of the accord which was put together by the JCC, and we are prepared to append our signatures to that. Um, we made a further concession to the minister and that we are prepared to amend clause three to extend it up to the end of 2011. So um, we're gonna extend clause three. Under the current accord, it goes up to uh, 2000, and um, December 2007, we are prepared to extend it to an additional three years, right? Um, so that it takes effect from the 1st of January to 12. Okay? So we made a further concession, and that concession is in exchange for settling the matter involving the bus terminus workers. For the GIS News Hour, I am Abigail McIntyre reporting.
The Grenada government is in full support of a proposal from the Government of India to bring in a reverse osmosis plant in Karakou to supply the island's water needs. A team of officials spent 10 days on the sister isle earlier this year, working with Nawasa and other officials to look at the feasibility of that project. This was done through the Small Industries Corporation, which mobilized a southern Indian firm called ITCOT. Following a techno-economic feasibility study, the proposal was presented to government. The proposal says that it will be a complete turnkey project for bringing in a reverse osmosis plant uh, with uh, capability of generating uh, 100,000 gallons of water capacity out of which 45,000 gallons per day could be distributed out of that plant. And uh, it will once and for all uh, solve the water problem in Karyaku in all aspects. So that is on the table with the government and this time also I had occasion to, uh, to uh, discuss it with uh, the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Foreign Minister. It seems that uh, the government of Grenada is quite supportive of the project. Just when I was coming to the studio I happened to run into uh, Minister George Prime okay. and I told him that <laughs> this, this project has gone a little ahead mm -hmm. and so we, we, are, we are quite uh, so expecting that uh, something positive will come out, will help the people of Karyaku and it will be again another um, signal uh, development in our bilateral cooperation. Yeah. That's Indian High Commissioner Malay Mishra. Grenada and India have also developed a partnership in the IT industry with the establishment of the ICT Center of Innovation and Excellence in the GIDC building in Frequente. The center, which opened in April, has trained more than 40 students so far. Setting up of the ICT Center is a high watermark in our bilateral relationship, no doubt about it. This is perhaps one of the very few centers like this which we have established in the entire Caribbean region. And I would say that following on the heels of Grenada, now we are going to set up a similar center in the Commonwealth of Dominica. And there's a lot of interest in the Dominicans to come to Grenada, visit okay. the center and see what is happening here so that they can draw some lessons. Okay. And so we are, it is a kind of a ripple effect, if you can say that. And once I think we have these kind of centers in the region, it is good to have connectivities. What we now require is broadband connectivity as you yeah. all know. Mm. And a lot of uh, uh, programs can be developed uh, in the government, e-government program. Yeah. And uh, like recently they did a telemedicine presentation uh, on the medical sector. Yeah. A lot of emerging technologies can merge and this ICT uh, center, what they have, could be the platform for developing these technologies in which people of here, Grenadians, can be of um, you know solid human resource asset. Mm -hmm. And these are the trainers who are here with us, who have been provided by the company which has set up this, uh, this center. They are, of course, for a limited uh, period, for yeah. two years. But the idea is, uh, by this two years' time, they should have trained some people from here who would then carry over and take on the center so that there is a continuity. The Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority will on December 1 celebrate its 7th anniversary as an autonomous civil aviation authority serving the OECS member states. The Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority is guided by the motto, Aviation Safety Through Service and Partnership. Director General Mr. Donald MacPhail says the purpose of the recognition is to promote the importance of civil aviation in the social and economic development of states in general and of the OECS member states in particular where the availability of air transportation is critical. He says the most significant contribution of the authority to the people of the OECS over the past seven years has been safety in transportation. The authority regulates civil aviation in six of the OECS states, Antigua Barbuda, St. Kitts Nevis, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Grenada. It also provides communication, navigation, and surveillance services to Montserrat, Anguilla, and the British Virgin Islands. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas is urging his constituents to expose themselves to as much information as possible regarding the education of their children. He was speaking during a consultation on universal secondary education held by the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development in St. Patrick on Tuesday. Details from Wendy Chateau. We are living in a world that is going through constant changes, were the words of Prime Minister Tillman Thomas, while urging parents to avail themselves to information that will aid them in guiding their children's success. 
The Grenadian leader was pointing to the need for developing countries like Grenada to keep up with changes in the global environment. His words came as officials of the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development informed residents of St. Patrick about universal secondary education and the Caribbean primary exit assessment that will replace the common entrance exams. Changes in technology, changes in economic system, changes on the agricultural front, and we have to keep up with these uh, changes. And since that education is so fundamental, because of the importance of education, I think we all need to be informed as to changes in the educational system. We want all our children to be educated, we have to give them equal opportunity. Therefore, a new system is coming into operation and um, we all should try to be abreast or be aware of it so that we could assist our, our children, we could encourage them uh, and to prepare them for a better future. The CPEA facilitates continuous assessment which provides a system for evaluating students' performance and using those findings to help improve their success. The Prime Minister urged parents to explore the benefits the CPEA will provide their children and to assist in harnessing the varied talents of each student. We have seen certain trends in society sometimes where children tend to deviate and you know, move away from the path we want them to take. But if we really give them a good foundation, show them the right values, show them love and appreciation, and to guide them along the way, we would have uh, a better community, better family, and a better nation at the end of the day. Because some of our children are academically inclined, some are technically inclined, some are artistically inclined. And once we discover the talent, we could guide them uh, uh, along the way. The removal of the common entrance exam is one component of universal secondary education, which will allow for every child to get an opportunity to succeed at the secondary level. Continuous assessment helps a teacher to determine the knowledge, understanding and skills attained by each child. It is administered in a variety of ways over a period of time to allow for observation of various tasks and the compilation of information about what students know, understand and can do. Do. The results of assessments help to ensure that all students make learning progress throughout the school cycle, thereby increasing their academic achievement. Keeping its promise of involving the public in the process, the ministry is holding public consultations across the island, the third of which was held in St. Patrick on Tuesday. The next session is scheduled for the St. Paul's Community Centre on November 29, 2011, having already met with residents of St. John and St. Andrew. I'm Wendy Chateau of the Public Relations Unit, Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back. In 1985, while polio was paralyzing 1,000 children a day, Rotary International committed to a goal, a goal of ending polio worldwide. Very soon now, after immunizing over 2 billion children, the goal will be achieved. Eradicating polio worldwide, that is humanity in motion. That is Rotary. Does bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice walk away let's all get involved talk to someone today about the way you feel call the legal aid and counseling clinic or the ministry of social services a message from the wellness committee
continuing the news, Grenada's Prime Minister and Minister for National Security, the Honorable Tillman Thomas, will emphasize the crucial link between security, human rights and democratic governance when he meets with Ministers of National Security in the Hemisphere on Thursday and Friday. The Prime Minister will lead a two-member delegation to the Organization of American States' third meeting of ministers responsible for public security in the Americas, which will also be attended by United States Atten Attorney General Eric Holder. The Prime Minister, accompanied by Special Assistant responsible for Immigration and Security, Philip Alexander, left the state on Wednesday for Trinidad and Tobago to attend the two-day meeting, which brings together ministers and vice ministers from the 34 member states of the OEAS. He says, and I quote, Grenada will continue to work with the region and the OAS to modernize and strengthen our security systems, including the Royal Grenada Police Force. We will seek avenues to provide training, improve equipment and enhance the legal system to increase the use of technology in crime prevention and interdiction." Unquote. The Grenadian leader said he is looking forward to a more coordinated regional approach to dealing with public security both in the CARICOM area and the wider region because those who perpetuate criminal activity are not restricted by borders. Prime Minister Thomas also pointed out that the engagement of the United States in the process is critical, especially since the region is used as a transshipment point for much of the drugs destined to the U.S. The Community Health Clinic in Karakou says its fisherman health fair was very successful. As part of World Health Day activities, the nurses on the Sister Eye held a health fair specifically to deal with the diabetes testing for the fishermen and women on the island. It was held on the 13th of this month in the fishing capital of Karakou, Windward. The event was sponsored by the Pan American Health Organization. Community health nurse Jamina Lambert says they saw more than 100 fishermen and she's hoping to make the health fair an annual event. She says the idea is to get men to take a preventative approach when dealing with matters of their health. We have realized that um, men seldom come to the clinic and um, they need to be cared for, they need to be looked after and we really want to make them realize that we have them in thoughts and we want to help them, we want to to um, encourage them to come to the clinic and as we have realized too that diabetes is on the increase and the men always appear in clinic when things are um, when things are really bad you know when complications has arise and there is nothing much that could be done that is the time they arrive in the clinic and we want them to come all year because as we know prevention is better than cure and we want them to more or less prevent the disease from happening and if it occur, like prevent complications. And we know that only de detection and prevention is the best way to go and this is what we want to do. The nurses also provided special transportation for people from PT Martin to attend the health fair. What we did, because it was funded by PAHO, we actually organized transport from different areas in Karakou and plus a boat was provided for the fishermen from Piti Martinic. So we had more or less Karakou and Piti Martinic covered. Uh -huh. Caribbean economists who met in Barbados on Tuesday have been called on to rethink the measures and practices used in the past to provide guidance to policymakers in the region. Governor of the Barbados Central Bank, Dr. Delay Worrell, told the 43rd Annual Monetary Studies Conference, AMSC, that the failure to be sufficiently specific may explain why economists and other monetary officials offer so little practical guidance to policymakers. He said central bankers had to make decisions on issues such as how to assess regional financial stability in the Caribbean and what financial soundness indicators are appropriate and useful for this integrated financial region. He added that there was need for alternative approaches to interest rate determination and more realistic models of interest rate effects. That's news. Sports is up next. celebrate with you on the GIS Price Morning Birthday Splash. Happy birthday. 
interested persons can send pictures and information to us at gisspicemorning at yahoo.com or call us on 440-2061. Public Workers Union observes Public Workers Week, Sunday, November 13th to Friday, November 18th, under the theme, Recommitting to Workers, Unity and Solidarity. The week begins with a church service at the Monjolu Anglican Church at 10 in the morning. Then, on Monday, November 14, come participate in a health walk, starting 4.30 in the afternoon at the Botanical Gardens and continuing through Paddock, Belmont, Lagoon Road, and end at the Public Workers Union headquarters. Then, on Tuesday 15th, it's a women and youth workshop. Wednesday 16th, new entrance into the public service workshop. On Thursday 17th, a health fair will be held at the Ministerial and Financial Complex from 9 in the morning to 12 noon. Come get an opportunity to test your blood pressure, among others. Also, on Thursday at 4 in the afternoon, enjoy a beautiful fashion show and tea party. And on Friday 18th, it's Appreciation Day at Public Workers Union headquarters. Come socialize with fellow public officers. Workers' unity and solidarity is our challenge. Let's make our Public Workers Week one to remember. Public officers are encouraged to be active participants in Public Workers Week, November 13th to 18th, 2011. West Indies fighting to avoid the follow-on second test against India in Kolkata. Grenada getting ready for the 2011 Wooden Island Cricket Tournament next week in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Coaching staff Clark John says that the sending off of defender Kasim Nangain caused Grenada dearly against Guatemala on Tuesday in their World Cup qualifier. And controversy hangs over the official results of the 2011 OCS Swimming Championships. These and more are all in this edition of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites reporting. Starting with the cricket, West Indies were 195 for three in their second innings at the close of the second day, at the close of the third day of the second test that's taking place in Kolkata against India. They were forced to follow one after being dismissed for 153 in their first innings. Spinners uh, Oja of four and uh, Yada of three shared seven wickets between them to undermine the West Indies batting. West Indies must at least bat through the fourth day and come up with at least, at least, uh, at least 200 runs if they are to have a chance of avoiding defeat. Uh, a lot will depend on Chandra Paul, who is 21 not out, and uh, Darren Bravo, unbeaten on a 38. Uh, Half centuries by Adrian Barrett, 62, and Kirk Edwards, 68, uh, have given the West Indies a reasonably good start in their second innings. They need to score well over 500 runs and even more second time around if they are uh, to come out of this one with a draw. On a brighter note, the West Indies A team beat Bangladesh by one wicket in St. Lucia to win the two match test series one game to nothing. Set 214 for victory, the last pair of Sunil Narayan and Leland Pascal saw them home, with Pascal hitting a 6 and a 4 to ensure the win. Narayan, who scored 40 in the first innings, was not out on 26. Danza Hyatt and Johnson Car Jonathan Carter set the West Indies on course with an opening stand of 83. The original team then slipped from 156 for 3 to 200 for 9. As spinner Shobo 4 for 84 and Rabil 3 for 63 kept the visitors in the fight. It was a good game for Pascal, who took 4 for 60 in the first innings, and fellow fast bowler Andy Russell, who kept it 5 for 36 second time around, to finish with match figures of 9 wickets. Fast goals in that game West Indies 129 and 219 for 9. Bangladesh 155 and 187. The teams are now getting ready for two 2020 and three one day internationals uh, with the first game in St. Lucia on Friday. Good performances by Lyndon Lawrence, uh, Rudy Paul, Devin Smith, and Eamon Alexander were the highlights of the first day of the second trial match to select the national team for the 2011 Winter Islands Cricket Tournament. The game at Progress Park in St. Andrew saw Fletcher's team scoring 171 in their first innings from some 52 overs. Uh, the top batsmen were Lawrence, 57, Paul, 45, and Fletcher, the captain, 36. 
Eamon Alexander had the outstanding figures of a 6 for 42. In reply, Smith's team reached 128 for 4 at Stumps, with Smith leading the way with an unbeaten 52. Marlon Henry is also unbeaten on 36. The game continues Thursday morning from 9.30. Official Dwayne Gill says that the encounter is the second of at least three matches planned to select the national team for the event from December 1st to the 7th in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We had a game in SSU and um, we had a full, full two-day match at SSU playing field. In fact, we had two half centuries in that game. One team batted first, that's um, Fletcher's team batted first and got a 91 in 76 overs. And the other team um, was bowled for 140 odd. And then this, that team batting again got some runs. So we, we, we do have one game that was played and um, hopefully we can get into two, two games in. Sure, Dwayne Gill. In related news, the 2011 Rhode Island Cricket Tournament has been reduced from a three- to a two-day competition. The event originally scheduled to run for two weeks has been scaled down to nine days because of the cost which could have exceeded $200,000. As such, organizers are hoping to extend the playing time from 90 to 115 overs per day. Originally, it was scheduled from the first to the 14th, but because of financial constraints by the Windward Board, this is my understanding, um, they have had to actually um, scale down the competition. So it's a two-day competition where you will play 105 overs in a day. However, there is the feeling that uh, the sub-regional players have been shortchanged with the curtailing of the competition. Over the years, we've not seen a batsman coming through from the Windwards, and one would have thought that you want to give them as much time as possible to occupy the crease and, um, you know, cutting down on, on the number of days, I don't think is in the, in the interest of cricket. But however, at least something is being done. I expect in this competition, you would have many results. You probably would have drawn matches. In fact, from Grenada's point of view, we would prefer to see Grenada batting the whole day and perhaps picking up first in his lead. We prefer to see the batsmen um, getting among the runs rather than trying to force a victory perhaps right. and, and having two very short innings. Cricket official there, Dwayne Gill. In football, a member of the national coaching staff, Clark John, says that uh, the sending off of defender Kasim Langain in the 55th minute caused Grenada dearly in the second round match, qualifying match against uh, Guatemala at the National Stadium on Tuesday. Grenada were leading Guatemala one goal to nil when Langain was given matching orders uh, after climbing elegantly to deny the opposition with a firm header. John says that up, up, up until that time, Grenada were, were pretty competitive in the game. Looking at the game, you will see that um, we had one of the better outcomes in the first half. We was right there, and um, I think we were, we, we, was, we was doing pretty much good. But um, unfortunately, the second half, I think um, our game must have break down when um, the red card, when um, Dorset and Langan got the red card. I think it sort of uh, really created a sort of a... Uh, environment where the team sort of uh, they, um, was kind of down in that way because um, the way in which he got the red card, I think you know some of the players was even reacting in a certain way. But it's something we will have to look at. Our players will have to know that even when these things happen, you still have a game. The game needs to continue and you need, you need to pick up and move on from there. John was surprised at the sending off. I was really disappointed because our player had um, clearly he really had the ball, right? And when you and you go to a header and you make contact, I mean, it's very little you could do to maneuver yourself in the air. And I could not have seen how he could have fouled the other guy when he was the one making contact with the ball and really got in the header, right? I, f I, I thought it was like anybody has to commit a foul, he would have been the other player. Football coach uh, Clark John. Staying with football, the curtains come down on the 2011 Republic Bank Rice Start football season Thursday at the National Stadium in St. George's. Defending champions, St. Joseph Convent St. George's, meet Magdalene College in the final of the girls' division. Convent defeated Anglican High School one goal to nil in the semifinals, while Magdalene College topped St. Mark's secondary three goals to nil on penalty kicks after they had played through a one-all draw. 
Magnal College, meanwhile, and St. Mark's Secondary are contesting the Junior Boys Final. St. Mark's uh, Magnal College defeated JBSS two goals to nil on penalty kicks after they had played to a goalless draw, while St. Mark's Secondary stopped Happy Hill Secondary one goal to nil. The St. Andrews and Secondary School SAS and St. Mark's Secondary are meeting in the Senior Boys Showdown. SAS defeated GBSS three goals to one, while St. Mark's beat St. Rose Modern Secondary School two goals to nil in the semifinals. The Junior Boys final between Magnolia College and St. Mark's Secondary will start the action from 12.30 in the afternoon. All the action at the uh, National Stadium with the curtains coming down on the 2011 Republic Bank Rice Start Youth Football Season. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. a message from the Ministry of Works, Physical Development and Public Utilities. The Ministry of Works would like to remind the public that the roadside along the Morris Bishop Highway was declared a no vending area in 2010 by the Ministry of Works and the Royal Grenada Police Force. A no vending sign was erected in the area opposite to the McIntyre Brothers business place to bring it to the attention of the public. The traffic department of the RGPF had said the highway is not to be used for selling of any items whatsoever, as this can cause accidents along the highway. A number of billboards on the highway is also an issue for the traffic department, and persons erecting these signs must first seek permission from the physical planning unit. The instability and closeness of the billboards to the corners can cause serious problems for road users. A sign with the words no vending without permission was also posted at the area commonly known as Wall Street in Grand Dance. All vending permission is granted by the Ministry of Works through the vending officer. For more information, call the Ministry of Works at 440-2271 or 440-2272. The preceding was a message from the Ministry of Works, Physical Development and Public Utilities. Start your morning with the Government Information Service. Tune in to GIS Spice Morning, Mondays through Fridays, starting 6.45 a.m. Spice up and brighten your morning with an informative television show with guests from a broad cross-section of society. You too can be a part of our Spice Morning. Call us at 440-2061 or email gisgrenada at yahoo.com. GIS TV Channel 12, your best choice for educational and entertaining television. Recapping the main points, government and Brazilian delegation Urbaniza elevate memorandum of understanding. Solidarity action being taken to support floor employees who were given dismissal letters and government supports Indian proposal for reverse osmosis plant in Karakou. That is DGIS News Hour. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. Watching the Government Information Service channels 12 and 22. Travel and bright. 
left my home for the glamour of this big city. I got a job in a factory working day and night, had to raise a family. Bought a house in the suburb and a fancy car, and life's been good to me. No 40 years of summer have come and gone, and time has taken its toll. Now I wanna go back to my Caribbean island to rest my weary soul. Somebody please show me the way away from this stress and strife. I wanna go home. Tropical breezes blow And sit out in the evening Where the air is green And watch the sunsets golden glow Smell of spice. 